This morning, what we're going to do is, you know, we've been in, in Galatians, and we actually wrapped Galatians up last week, and then I'll have that up online. Sorry, it's not there yet. It's just things are, internet is not as friendly here as it should be. Anyways, but today, what I want to do in the next few days, really for the month of August, we're not going to do another book study. We're, we're going to go more topical things and what the Lord has laid on our hearts. But in September, we'll start a new study. And we got that all planned out. We'll introduce that pretty soon, but uh, we can't wait for that. But this morning, what I want to talk about is, so a few weeks ago, in Galatians, we touched on the the principle of sowing and reaping. And I really wanted to elaborate more on that, but we didn't have time because we were in Galatians. And then the 65th celebration of the church came along, and I thought, this is the perfect time to tie it all together, but we didn't have time or you guys have been here for six hours instead of two hours, what you were that day. And so we didn't do it then. And so this has really been on my heart. And it's actually, there's a list of uh, farming principles that this pastor put together. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking this list that he put together. I'm, I'm kind of converting over to a sermon. And that's what we're talking about today. And so Melissa said there's 12 points. There are 12 points. I don't want to scare you this morning, but there are 12 points. Well, we'll get through them, I promise. But uh, this is something that's really been on my heart, and that I really feel like the Lord has wanted us to hear for a little while today. So today, we're talking about farming. Now, some of you got really excited just then, and some of you put on the nightcap because you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm not talking about farming. But just hang with me. It's all I'm asking this morning is you hang with me because we see in the Bible The Bible consistently drawing comparisons between farming and the Christian life. All throughout scriptures you see this. And it starts in Galatians. Galatians chapter 8 verse 22. It says, as long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvesting. Cold and heat, summer, winter, day and night. Hello, right? It's like, hello. It's so funny. We went and and had the wonderful lunch with Bill and Cindy the other day. And we're talking about Bill, and we said, you know the weather? He's like, yeah. He said, it's hot. People act surprised. It's July. I'm like, yes, thank you. Exactly, right? It happens every year. It's like, and there's no big, it's not a surprise. In a few months, guess what? It's going to be winter. It's not a surprise. It happens every year. That's what scripture says. In verse 22, there's planting, there's harvesting. There's cold, there's heat. There's summer, there's winter, day and night. It happens. We're not surprised by this, right? And then in Galatians 6, and chapter 6, verse 7, it says this way. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. It says you will always harvest what you plant. So today what I want to do is I want us to walk through learning, learning to plant in faith. Learning to plant and, and let you guys know a little secret that each and every one of you are called to be farmers. Some of you are like, yes. Some of you are like, no. Okay, But today you're called to be a farmer. Every one of us is called to be a farmer. And so in order to do, what, do this, we're going to look at God's law of the harvest. And I want to show you some questions. These questions, I want to ask you the same questions at the end of our sermon today. So these questions get in your heart. What seeds does God want me to start planting? Maybe God's laid somebody, something on your heart. You need to plant some seeds, okay? What seeds does God want me to start planting? If I haven't planted them, how can I start planting today? And then the third question I want you to ask yourself today, if I have planted them, how can I patiently that's a word we do not like, isn't it? I mean, I don't like that word. I don't know if you, but how can I patiently wait on God today? And so we're going to look at these laws about planting and harvesting, sowing and reaping. Uh, you can even call it broadcasting. You know, when you was a kid, you went out to plant, and, you know, Grandpa would always, you know, you got a bag full of seeds. I mean, you just want to throw them, don't you? I mean, you don't want to put them in, you know, he would dig the deal and you'd put them in it. The, but you just, you know, you just wanted to broadcast those suckers, right? And that, that's another term they use, broadcasting seeds, you know. But God's law of planting and harvesting can be used in every aspect of your life. That's what I want you to think about. So it seems like, you know, we can equate things like farming. That's very real. I mean, that's very black and white, right? You plant seeds, you get a harvest. I mean, it's common sense, Right? And so we, we, in farming, these principles are great. We understand these principles. They're concrete. But when you translate it over to your life, 
sometimes we kind of, the, 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 the impact doesn't there. It loses something in translation. Sometimes we forget, oh yeah, that works with farming, but my life, it's a little different. No, it's not. It's the same. So these principles, they will apply in your relationships, in your business, in your health, in your finances. And here's the deal. Whatever you need more of, again, this is one of those principles. I'm going to say it, you're like, duh. Whatever you need more of, you need to plant more of. You're like, well, that makes sense. Yes, it does, doesn't it? If you need more corn, guess what you need to do? Plant more corn. And in today's culture, though, that's a little counterintuitive, counterintuitive because, well, I need more of this. Well, I, I need more so I can't give more away. I need more love, but I can't really give much away. I need more patience, and I definitely don't have any to give away. Or I need more finances, and I definitely don't have any to give away. And so we, we hold tight to things. Instead of living under these principles that we're going to talk about today. And so whatever you need more of in your life, we need to learn these principles of planting and harvesting. And it will make sense. And every one of these, every one of these 12, I'm, I'm just telling you right off the bat, it's not rocket science, right? Every one of them, you're like, well, you duh, right? Okay, so it starts with number one. Everything starts as a seed. Everything starts as a, think about it. Everything starts as a seed. The 65th celebration we just had, I overheard Olin telling somebody that the church turned 65 this year. So there was a seed planted in my heart thinking, I want to honor what happened in the past. I want to celebrate what God has done. And that's how this came about, right? A seed was, our nation was started by a seed, wasn't it? Some guys had an idea what freedom should look like. Boom, we got a nation. Brighton started, you started as a seed in your mother's womb. Genesis 1.11 says this way. Then God said, let this land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plant and trees from which they came, and that is what happened. So what we're talking about is when they say seed, I want you to think of this today. Anytime I say seed, when we say seed, I want you to think of anything valuable that you give away. Anything valuable that you give away. So when you give encouraging words, think of a seed. That's a seed that you're planting. You give encouraging words. When you give your time, that's a seed that you're planting. That's something valuable. Your, your time is valuable. And that's something you're giving away. That's a seed that you're planting. You give away your talent. Some of you are very talented in a lot of different areas. When you give that away, that's a seed that you're planting. So you see, this, see, a seed is anything valuable that you give away. So let me ask you this. What kind of seeds are you planting in your relationships? What kind of seeds? Are you, what, what valuable things are you planting in your relationships? Some of you are planting seeds of kindness or seeds of hatefulness. Maybe some of you are planting seeds of love or seeds of hate. Maybe you're building up or maybe you're tearing, tearing, tearing down. But the bottom line is you're going to reap what you sow. But everything starts with a seed. Number two, nothing happens until the seed is planted. Again, some of these are like, really? I know, I'm a genius. No, seriously though, nothing happens until the seed is planted. The seed will do no good if it stays in the bag. So I got a bag today full of um, Bachman's famous black beans. These are very valuable. But if they stay in a bag, how valuable are they? Really? It, it does me, does no one no good if they stay like this. They're useless. Jesus said it this way in John chapter 12, verse 24, I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Again, doing no, doing no one no good. You know, my, my grandfather was a farmer. And we had this old, broke-down uh, Dodge pickup. It had a camper on everything. It didn't move. It never, I, don't know, I don't know if it ever moved. But it was just there, right? And inside that truck, we loved playing in that truck, but inside that truck was all kinds of 
like coffee cans, bottles, glasses. There was a thousand brown bags rolled up, and in everything was seeds. I mean, we just call it the seed truck because it was as full of seeds that Grandpa would keep. It's not doing anybody any good, is it? If you have a truck full of seeds, it's useless. And that's what Scripture is telling us. When you got to plant, you got to get rid of it. It's like Les, Les Horn. I think he's about counting money right now. He's a farmer. He goes to the store and gets a truckload of seed, takes it to the barn, and leaves it in the barn. Every one of us will, even if you don't know anything about farming, you say, you're nuts. What are you doing? That's crazy. It's got to be given away. But we have to also understand this act of planting and sowing, it's an act of faith, isn't it? You know, when you take that seed, when you take one of these little seeds and you plant it in the dirt, you, don't you get so excited? You know, when the, when the winter finally breaks or you're able to get outside, it's starting to get warm, you get a little anxious, don't you? If you're the kind of you got person that they, if you seed your own plants, you know, you come inside, you got the little containers, you put the little tomatoes or peppers or whatever you're doing, and you put them in the dirt, and you put it under, under it there in the bottom, you believe, you get excited because you believe something great's going to come with that, isn't it? Like you can already taste the tomatoes in your mouth from when you plant that seed in that little dirt or the peppers or whatever it is. You get it so, but it's also scary, isn't it? It's scary because once you put that seed in the dirt and you cover up, you don't know what's going on. Like, is that guy going to bloom? Is it going to sprout? Is it going to turn into something? Maybe the seed's bad. Maybe I touched it too much. Maybe I dried it out. I don't know. What's going to happen? And so it's a little scary at the same time because we got to, essentially you got to give it away. You don't hold on to it because it takes faith when you put it in the ground at the same time, it's a little scary when you put it in the ground. Why? Because you can't see what's happening underneath the ground, can you? But isn't it tempting? I don't know. You probably, you're probably not this way. Maybe it's me, ADHD or whatever. But I'm a little tempted sometimes. You plant those seeds. You just want to kind of push that. After a couple of days, I know, I know. I, I, I tell you, I'm a little impatient. But after a couple of days, I'm like, I just want to see. I, I just want to see if it even cracked a little bit. Maybe it's maybe there's something green coming out. I want, to, I want to see. So you go over there, you start pushing off the dirt, don't you? And you're like, okay, can I see that? You get impatient. You don't know. What if this? What if that? And, and all the what ifs start kicking in. What if it doesn't sprout? What if it doesn't produce? And so it takes faith because it's a scary to give that seed away, isn't it? Well, I don't know if I had it too long. If, I don't know if they'll like my talent. If I give my talent away, I don't know if they, will they criticize me. Will they what? Well, I feel like God's telling me I need to lead a class. I need to lead a small group, but I'm not a leader. I, I, don't, I, I don't, and all the what ifs start kicking in, don't they? Well, I feel like God's wanting me to do this, but if you knew the choices, I would, God, you know, and all these what ifs start kicking in. And so that's why we're saying it takes faith. It takes faith to plant that seed because you don't know what's going to happen. You're not a master farmer. Right? You don't know. You got one job. As a farmer, you have one job this morning, plant a seed. But, oh, it's tempting, isn't it? What ifs? And we let the what ifs talk us into what? Into putting my seed back in my bag and just carrying it around with me. I don't even, I don't even plan it. And then we know it's useless at that point, isn't it? Jesus said this in Mark chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Jesus said, also, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. You don't know. You got one job. Plant a seed. Plant a seed. Number three, when I have a need, I should plant a seed. When I have a need, I should plant a seed. So bring back the farmer metaphor this morning. Say Les gets up in the morning. 
Les gets up. He goes out to his field. Lo and behold, there's nothing in the field. It's barren field. What do you think he does? You think at that point Les goes back to the house and starts complaining to Pam, well, I got an empty field. There's nothing in that stinking field. That field is no good. It's just, it's just useless. Or he could go to the coffee shop. Go to the coffee shop. He's around with all the guys. He's just complaining, man, I've got this beautiful field that has nothing in it. It's a, you know what? Is he just complaining his buddies? Or maybe he goes back to the house and starts having a prayer meeting. God, would you fill this field? What do you think a farmer would do when he goes out to the empty field? What do you think he would do? Some of you are way too spiritual for me this morning. Common sense. <laughs> Common sense, what? He goes to the barn, gets some seed, takes it and what? Plants the field. Common sense. You have a need, you should plant a seed. It's brilliant. We make it too complicated in life sometimes. You, you have a need, you plant a seed. You don't complain, you don't have a... Listen, there, I don't, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm all for praying. But when God has given you seed, and you see empty field, it's a no-brainer right there. I ain't got to pray about it. I just got to do my job. I got one job. Plant the seed. That's my job. That's your job. Plant the seed. You see the need, you plant the seed. Ecclesiastes eleven six says this. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if a profit will come from one activity or another or maybe both. You don't know. You don't know when you plant a seed what's going to come of it. So you have a need, you plant the seed. You know, the government loves all of its acronyms, right? FBI, IRS, all this. I've got one for you this morning. It's ABP. Always be planting. That's what you should be doing. Always be planting because you don't know where it's going to grow. You don't know, do you? Let me tell you one of the most annoying things we have right now is, you know, weeds are the best things that grow. I mean, if you can't grow nothing, you can grow a weed, I promise you that. So at the church here, we have... You know, the, the, the roof is very high. You know, it, I'd say, what, 60, 70 feet high? So the other day, I'm out here. I'm just, you know, driving around property. I look up, and up here on the north gutter up here, there's a beautiful little bush or something growing. <laughs> like, what in the world? How in the world was some stupid bird probably milked the nest up there and got some seed and put it in his nest, and now we got a beautiful bush 40 up in the gutter. Like, how does that happen, right? It will grow anywhere. You don't know. That's the point. That's why you're always be planting, because you don't know. You don't know. You look at something. I would look at that and I'd say, there's no way I'm growing anything in the gutter of a church. But guess what? I'm growing something in the gutter of a church. <laughs> you don't know. That's the point. You see a need, you plant a seed, and don't judge whether they can grow there or not. Let God do that. How many times we hold on that seed because we're like, well, it doesn't look good. Anybody in their logical mind would not plant a seed in the gutter. There's some circumstances around surrounding you. There's some people in your life. You think anything, anybody in their logical mind would not plant a seed there because it will not grow. I just say, plant a seed. That's your job. Don't judge whether it's going to grow or not because you don't know. Let God handle that part of it. You're like, well, what? What if? What if they don't accept it? What if they they turn my seed down? What if they don't? What? Quit allowing the what ifs and start planting some seeds of faith. I mean, it's very simple. This is all so logical. It's very common sense. If I go to the bank of Bolivar. And ask them if I could withdraw $100 out of the bank. Why do you think they're going to tell me? No. I don't have an account at the Bank of Bolivar. I've never made a deposit at the Bank of Bolivar. So no, they're not going to be giving me no money. And you would say, look at that and you say, yeah, duh. Right? And same principle applies here. If you're not making any deposits, if you're not sowing seeds of love, seeds of encouragement... Seeds of hope, guess what? You're not withdrawing. You're not drawing any love, any encouragement, any hope, because you sow what you reap. You reap what you sow. Sorry, I'll get that straight one of these days. 
Without deposit, there's no withdrawal. It sounds countercultural today to what, what you hear, but whatever you need, you need to give more of it away. You need more time? Start giving some of your time away. You need some guidance in your life? Maybe you pick somebody to start investing in their life. You need some more income? Start giving some away. Number four, and I've really got to move. Whatever I plant is what I reap. Again, a no-brainer, right? But here's the deal. If old Les Horn goes out and plants a crop of corn, in a month or so, guess what? He's not going to go out to that same field and say, where are my watermelons at? Right? I mean, that'd be stupid, wouldn't it? But it's the same principle here. Whatever I plant, I'm going to reap. So it shouldn't surprise you. If you plant corn, you're getting corn. You're not getting watermelons. But again, this principle, it can work both ways. You plant love, guess what you're going to get back? Love. You plant bitterness, guess what you're going to get back? Not love. So don't be surprised you're planting bitterness all over the place and you're expecting love. You don't get none back. Don't be like, where's my watermelon? It doesn't work that way. These are simple principles. Galatians 6, 7, the last part of 7 says, you will always harvest what you plant. Right? As a kid growing up, the old saying, you get what you dish out. Let me read you some what the scripture says about this principle. Job 4.8, my experiences show that those who plant trouble and cultivate evil will harvest the same. Hello. Proverbs 22.8, those who plant injustice will harvest disaster. This is one of my favorites, Hosea 10.13. But you have cultivated wickedness and harvested a thriving crop of sin. So don't be surprised. This is what you planted, Right? Matthew 7, 2, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, will be measured to you. But then look how it flips. In Proverbs eleven eighteen, 18, the last part says, one who sows righteousness gets what? A sure reward. Wow. Right? Hosea 10, 12, sow yourself righteousness. James 3, 18. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace. And if you plant seeds of peace, what are you going to reap? A harvest of righteousness. Isn't that beautiful? Yet so many times we get shocked. In a relationship, all you spew is, is dissatisfaction and hatred, and, and you don't give love back. You're like, what happened? I want you to think of that anytime you're complaining about something like that. I want you to make a middle note and say, where's the watermelon? Where's the water? It's a, come on. If all you give your wife is dissatisfaction, you're, you're not happy with that, this, you're not happy about this, you're not happy with this, guess what? Don't be surprised when you're not getting any love. You planting corn, you're asking watermelon. It doesn't work that way. You reap what you sow with your wife, you reap what you sow with your children. If your children are never good enough, guess what? You'll never be good enough for them. It's simple. You reap what you sow with your workers, with your co-workers. You reap what you sow with your finances. Come on. I'm just saying, if you're struggling, I won't, I won't go there. I won't meddle. I'm just saying, you reap what you sow with your finances. I mean, you, you can't sow laziness and reap rewards. You can't sow hatred and reap love. It does not work that way. Number five, I'm not the only sower. Hate to burst your bubble on this one. You're not the only sower. Think about your own life. Some of you are reaping what someone else has sown in your life. I know for myself, I am reaping what my mother sowed into my life. I'm reaping what my grandfather sowed in my life, what my other grandfather sowed in my life. They sowed a Christian heritage in my life. They sowed a love for Jesus in my life. I'm reaping that today because of them. 
Again, I understand the opposite is true. So some of you may be coming from an abusive family. You're reaping that today, and I've, I'm sorry for that. But understand, you can change that. That doesn't have to continue that way. You can start sowing seeds of love in your own family and change that course of your history. You can be the catalyst of change by what you sow today. It doesn't have to be what was sown in your life. You can start afresh today. You're not the only sower. So maybe today you're sowing seeds that's going to help others. Maybe today you're sowing seeds that's going to help your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids. Maybe you're sowing seeds today that's going to help your neighbor. Maybe your coworker is going to reap something you're sowing today. Maybe you're going to, you know, you want to leave a heritage of love in your family? Start sowing love in your family today. Show your wife how much you love her. Show your children how much you care for them. Tell them with your words. Let them see that in action. Start sowing in your own life. It's not too late. You got breath in your lungs. You still got a job to do. Maybe you start today sowing your time, sowing your talent, sowing your money so that your kids, your neighbors, your church can reap what you've sown. You start today. Jesus said this in John 4, 38. I sent you to reap where you did not plant. Others already done the work before you, and you will gather the harvest. So start today. You want to leave a legacy? Start sowing that today. Don't wait. Don't wait for the perfect day. Don't wait for the perfect opportunity. Well, well they don't need me. They don't. Start sowing today. Use your talent. Maybe God's telling you you need to lead an area. Step up. Start sowing today. You've been hurt in the past. You've been hiding your talent. You've been hiding your, your gift. Start sowing today. Start sowing today. Number six, I need to hurry. Always reap in a different, different season than I sow. Always reap in a different season than I sow. This is definitely something we don't want to hear, is it? We don't want to hear that it takes time. It takes time. Don't you love it when you plant your little seeds? If you grow tomatoes from seeds, you plant the little seeds, you plant your peppers in the little... You get so excited. You get the soil. You get the right mixture you're looking for. You get the little containers. You want the biodegradable ones, be earth-friendly. You get all of it in place. There's excitement. You're getting things. You're, and you get them planted. It's just like, oh, Right? And every day you're checking, see if I got any sprouts, right? It's, it's this impatient thing that we need to learn that, okay, we're going to plant, but the harvest is not always instant. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 5 says this, there's a time for everything, a season for every activity on earth, a time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to scatter, a time to gather. It's hard to accept this. It's also hard to accept that in... It's hard to accept this principle in life, but in the garden we can. And this, this one is, this is a freebie for you, but if you plant like a, a, a tomato, say, or a fruit, guess what? They don't all ripen at the same time, do they? I mean, it doesn't happen that way. You'll get a green one, and then you'll get a red one. You maybe get two red ones, you get three green ones. They're not, it's not all the same time. So quit looking at your friend. Quit looking at your neighbor. Quit looking at your, your coworker and complaining about what you don't and they have. That happens all the time, doesn't it? Well, I know they've been, I know they had this, and I know they, they just got this. Lord, I've been praying for that. Why didn't I get that? Theirs was ripe. Why isn't mine ripe? Mine broken. We complain about it all the time. He got a new truck. I want a new truck. Their family got restored. My family's broken. The thing is, it takes time. And in that time, what are we doing? We're waiting on the Lord. And in that time, God's trying to show you something through the process of waiting on Him. He's drawing you closer. Because I guarantee you, when things are getting ripe all around you, that's going to drive you to your knees. You're going to be talking to Jesus a lot more than you did. And you get closer to Him. The best thing you do, wait upon the Lord. Number seven, I must be patient and not give up. 
Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we'll reap if we do not give up. Don't give up. You plant that seed, and it's been years. Don't give up. You plant that seed, and you have seen nothing from that seed. It must have been a dud. Don't give up. Some of you have been waiting for a while now. You're to your breaking point. Kind of just don't give up. Don't give up. You did what God called you to do. You planted a seed. Now don't give up. Number eight, I always reap more than I sow. We love this one. I always reap more than I sow. You know, I like, we always do a little garden, sometimes bigger than we probably should, but we always do a little garden. And in a garden, I, my whole purpose of my garden is to make salsa, right? <laughs> and so there's tomatoes, there's all kinds of peppers. I want salsa, right? And one of my favorite is jalapenos. And so we got like three different kinds of jalapenos right now growing in our garden. But jalapenos are awesome. Have you ever, if you ever cleaned a jalapeno, you know, you know, you cut the ends, you cut it in half, and then there is a bazillion seeds in there, right? I mean, you, get, you start cleaning and you can't get them all out. They get stuck to your fingers. They get popped in your eye. That's always fun. Or you forget you got contacts, and that's always fun, right? There's seeds on the ground. There's, se there's seeds everywhere, isn't there? I mean, I even get the cutting board out, and like one stays on the cutting board. And like 50 go everywhere else. There's so many seeds in these, right? So think of that. There's one little seed. Say it's a jalapeno seed. I plant that one seed. How many seeds am I getting back from that jalapeno seed? A lot. A lot. I mean, you got to be God to figure that number out. But there's a lot, right? I mean, you're talking probably hundreds of seeds from that one seed. Isn't that a beautiful principle? Matthew 4, 8 says, And other seeds fell in a good soil and produced grain. Growing up, increasing, and yielding 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. We love this verse. We also remember it works in the other way too, right? You plant love, you're getting lots of love back. You plant, plant patient, people's going to be patient with you back, right? But you plant distrust, you're getting lots of distrust back. I mean, it's just a fact. You plant anger everywhere you go, you're getting anger plus back. You always reap more than you sow. Number nine, I increase my harvest by planting more seed. Another one. You're like, Pastor, wow, you worked really hard on these, didn't you? I increase my harvest by planting more seeds. Second Corinthians 9, 6 or 7 says this. I want you to get this. Remember this. A farmer who plants a few seeds will get a small crop. One who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. This verse is saying you sow generously, guess what? You're reaping generously. This verse is saying you get to choose how big your harvest is. Proverbs 11.12, I love how it says this in the New Living Translation. 11.24, I'm sorry. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. Right? This is, I mean, this is scriptural. I'm not making this up today. This is a principle from the Word of God. You give generously, you're going to get back. You give generously of your talent. You start teaching people how to do what you, God has gifted you to do. You're training them. Guess what you're going to get? You're going to be more blessed than ever. You give of your time when you don't even have it. Guess what? You're going to be blessed with all the time in the world. It's simple. It's so simple. We choose to ignore it so many times. Number 10. I'm going to move on. I got to go. The more seed I plant, the more God will give me. God's looking for those who plant generously, who give generously. Because guess what? He wants to give them more. You cannot outgive God. You know, we, when I worked at uh, Rural Compassion, we would get supplies, and our supplies we'd give out to churches, and we trained them how to use these to build relationships in the community. So we gave away a lot of backpacks, a lot of shoes, uh, water, snacks, all kinds of things, and we teach them and show them, okay, we'll go to the police department, fire department, school, and we make all these connections, right? Well, there's always be one or two people on the team that are like, well, I think we need to limit the number of shoes we're giving out to certain places. We need to limit the backpacks we're giving out to these people. And I'll never forget our director's response, Steve Donaldson, him and his brother started Convoy, but he'd always say, 
listen, God's got enough. Just give it away. And that's what God's looking for. He's looking for that kind of heart where you just give it away. And I'm not just talking about your money today. Yeah, we'll take your money. We love your money. We can use your money. But I'm talking about your talents, your time. We need greeters in the front to welcome people. Give of your time. We need help in the coffee shop. Give of your time. We need help in praise and worship. Give of your talents. I mean, I'm just saying, what do you have that you could give generously to the Lord? Because when you give generously to the Lord, he's going to give generously back to you. I want that in my life. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 says, For God is the one who provides a seed for the, for the farmer and then the bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide, provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Let me read that for you one more time. I love this verse. For who? Who? Who is the one? God. God is the one who provides a seed for the farmer. And bread to eat. In that same way, he'll provide and increase your resources. God will do this in your life. God will give you more than enough. God will give you that harvest of plenty in your life. Number 11, I'm almost done. Number 11 is a big one. I plant by faith and not by feelings. This is, this is a tough one. This is a tough one for some of us. You know, you think the farmer gets up in the morning... And he's just dying to go out in the field. I'm sure some days, but most days I would say not. You ask any farmer today, he's like, hey, my kids want to be a farmer. What, you got any advice they tell you? Don't. It's probably what they tell you, right? It's hard work. That's a lot of hard work to get up, go to the fields, tend to the fields, harvest, plant. It never stops. They don't have hours or hours. It's 24 hours a day. It's hard work. And our world has flipped the script, and all they do is go by feelings. Oh, if it feels good, just do it. Oh, if it feels right for you, it's okay for everybody. If it feels that we're all, the world is driven, and they're trying to make you be driven by your feelings, and not by your faith. I mean, there's times when I get tired. There's times when I don't feel like being patient. But those times I got to swallow my tongue, plant a seed of faith, and be patient with people, Right? Because I'm what? I'm going by faith and not by my feelings. There's times, there's definitely times when I'm stressed out. So I plant a seed of faith and not my feelings. Do you hear me this morning? You don't always feel like loving your coworker. But you're going to plant a seed of faith and love that coworker. You may not always feel like using your talent for the Lord, but guess what? You're going to plant a seed of faith and use your talent for the Lord. I'm sorry if you don't feel like it, but you've been called to do a job. This is what we're called to do. Plant seeds of faith, not seeds of feeling. Maybe you've been hurt by someone. You feel like you're not giving of yourself right now. Maybe by faith, you need to plant a seed. You're called to be a farmer. As long as there's breath in your lungs, there are seeds to plant. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how long you've been in Christian faith, how long you haven't been in Christian faith, you have a bag full of seeds to plant. And God is calling you to plant these seeds. God will give you opportunities to plant these seeds. Psalms 126, 5 and 6 says this, Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Come on. Those of you who are hurting this morning, those of you who have been hurt, those of you who don't feel like planting nothing this is for you those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy they weep as they go to plant their seeds they weep at, those going my feelings this is where they give up this is where they throw in the towels this is where I'm done this is where I've been mistreated I've been there. this is where they stop serving the Lord but those they weep as they go to plant their seeds but they sing as they return with the harvest God will give you opportunities to plant seeds, and there'll be times, I promise you, you will not feel like it. And you let your feelings win, you're going to miss out on the blessing of God in your life. 
Because we're going to go by faith. We're going to plant seeds of faith, not seeds of feelings all around us. And number 12, I know you didn't think I was ever going to get there. The best time to plant is now. The best time to plant is now. Well, pastor, I'm waiting for the perfect time. Trouble with that, there's not a perfect time. The time is now. The enemy tricks you in waiting for the perfect. Well, there's this friend of mine. You know, I don't think he's right. He's not really in a right headspace to receive what. I'm going to wait for the perfect time. Well, you know, I got a family member. I, they really could use. But you know what? I just, I, you know, they've been going through a lot in their life right now. They, they don't, they, I, it's not, now it's not the time to plant. That seed's a little, that ground's a little rocky. That's a little dry. You know what happens when that happens? You're thinking too much of your farming ability right there. You're thinking you're the master farmer. Guess what? You're called to do one job, plant the seed. You're not called to cultivate the seed. You're not called to raise the seed. You're not called to, you're not called to save that seed. You're called to plant the seed. I love that. I love, love, love that. Why? Because that doesn't mean, that means it doesn't matter if you know the, the Romans road of salvation. It's great if you do. But if you don't, guess what you're still called to do? Plant a seed. Well, I don't know the 16 fundamentals of the assembly of God, two scripture references. That's okay. You're not called to quote that. You're called to plant a seed. That's it. It's that simple. But yet we get caught up in like, well, you know, if I plant the seed, I'm going to have to nourish the seed. I'm going to have to grow the seed. I'm going to have to convince the seed to become a Christian. No. You're thinking too highly of yourself. That's not your job. You're called to plant a seed. If you can encourage that seed, great, but you're not called to save that seed. You're called to plant the seed. So don't tell that seed if it's ready or not. Only God can do that. You're called to plant a seed. Ecclesiastes 11.4, farmers who wait for perfect weather, weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. Well, one of these days, I will, baloney. One of these days is none of these days is what that really means. You know, we just celebrated 65 years. Can I get some of you guys, the worship team, to come back? We just celebrated 65 years of Brighton being a church. We celebrated 65 years of the history of what God has done in Brighton. Can I just tell you, if you're hearing me this morning, you're not here to watch history. God has brought you here at this time, at this moment, to make history. He's called you to be a farmer. He's called you to plant a seed. This morning, I want to go back to my questions and ask you these questions again. What seeds does God want me to start planting? If I plant them, how can I, if I haven't planted them, how can I start planting today? If I plant them, how can I patiently wait on God? Every one of these 12, I know I, I, I probably should have divided this up, but I just, every one of these 12, you look at them in a farming ideology makes perfect sense doesn't it well, yeah like an empty field it's not going to grow nothing unless i plant seed duh if i want more of a harvest i gotta plant more seed duh but when it comes to applying these to our life we're like well you know that's i don't have to give you know, in my life, I'm just scared of what they'll say about if I try to lead, I'm not this, I'm not that. And so we just... You're called to be a farmer this morning. You're called to plant a seed. Why don't you stand with me this morning? We're going to close this out. best time to plan is now it is scary it takes faith I understand that but I also understand some of you have been holding on to your seed maybe a little too long 
God's given you a big, great bag full of seed, and you've kind of been holding it too tight. Like, well, it's, it's not, that's not good, that's not good. A gutter at church can grow. Come on. Who are you to tell the seed where it can and can't grow? The way we're going to end this is we're going to have an altar call here in a second. But before we, before we do, before we leave, i got a challenge for each and one of you. In the back, underneath the mirror on the usher's table, what we call the usher's table, is a, a bowl, of, a white bowl. In that bowl is a bunch of these black beans. I'm sure you got beans at the house. I'm sure, whatever. But as you leave, I want you to take one bean with you. And I want you to put that bean somewhere you'll see it every day. Like put it in your car. Like for me, if I put it in my cup holder, that would annoy the snot out of me because anytime you set a cup down, it, it would wobble, right? I mean, I, I, that, I'm, I'm OCD like that. I can't have that. But that would get my attention is what I'm saying. So put it in your car somewhere where you'll see it every day. And I want to challenge you, when you see that seed, when you see that bean, you think, oh yeah, I'm a farmer. Where can I plant today? Where can I plant today? If you don't drive, put it somewhere at the house, put it by your toothbrush. If you don't brush your teeth, put it in the refrigerator. Put it somewhere where you'll see it and you're reminded every day that you're called to be a farmer. You're called to plant the seed. And some of you standing up this morning say, well, I don't have nothing to give with baloney. Because you have Jesus. <laughs> I don't have, I'm not talented. I'm not gifted singer. I'm not. That's okay. You have Jesus. And you can give Jesus. You can give love. You can give patience. You can give kindness. You can plant seeds. You're like, well, I don't. Start with your family. Start with your family. Start writing your heritage with your family by planting seeds of love. Every day you plant seeds of love in their heart. With your spouse every day. You don't leave the house without telling me love them without a kiss. You're planting little seeds. Why? Because in, down the road you want your kids, you want your grandkids to reap this harvest of love that you got going on right now. Maybe you're in here this morning and you say, well, I, you know, I haven't had that. I don't have that in my life. Today is a great day to start planting. Start planting seeds of love in your life. Maybe some of you need to start planting seeds of forgiveness in your life. Seeds of hope. Seeds of encouragement. So when you leave, stop by the bowl, grab a seed, take it with you. So it'll be a reminder every day. But right now, we're gonna, we're, I want to have an altar call. Because I want some of us to take serious this, this job you've been given to be a farmer. And it's all to call a couple things. One, if you don't feel like you're qualified to be a farmer, can I just tell you you are? And maybe you need to come down and have a little time with Jesus. Let him encourage you. And when you leave, I guarantee you, he'll give you a big bag of seeds to start spreading all over the place. There is someone you in here that has, has, God has laid someone in your heart, but you never planted a seed because you're like, well, the time's not right. You need to bring that to the altar. You need to commit to God that you're going to plant that seed. And then maybe there's some of you in here this morning and say, I planted a seed, but it's been years and nothing's happened. Maybe you need to come down and let God encourage you this morning. Recommit, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. Because what happens when we plant that seed, we start spreading the dirt. What happens when we plant that seed with a family member and we start poking, 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 and the family member doesn't want nothing to do with us. Instead of waiting on God, we try to intervene. So we just need to encourage this morning. You planted your seed, now let God do his business. So we're going to have the worship team close us out. But if you're in here and one of those three things apply to you, why don't you come down front, spend a little time with Jesus. Let him encourage you this morning. If you have to leave, stop by the bowl, grab you a seed. Let me be a reminder every day, you got a job to do. Plant a seed. Would you join us in prayer? Not enough.
discount any kind of property, any kind of land, any kind of person, but we start sowing our seed just wherever you lay it on our hearts, Lord Jesus, God. In precious holy name we pray. Amen. You guys are called to be farmers. Let's get to work. God bless you.